we lost our um, sorry about that we lost our uh, recording so okay we're recording but Where did it stop it I don't know but I the everything you were saying was live so I'll figure it out we'll, all right I'll go from go on anyway, um, continue on so as we get together and talk on on Shabbat which is God's rest day um, we're gonna be sharing things that we experienced going through Macy um, living for the last 17 years 17 years oh my god 17 years anyway um, raising yep. children um, there's been problems that's not easy but the Lord has been with us and we've had great great rabbi uh, washer and Eileen and the rabbi we have now God covers you and you're in the right stream he's going to cover you and put people around about you that are going to lift you up in prayer and encourage you and that's what we really need right now the Lord is saying encourage 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 we have a time coming in coming up that we as believers are going to be tried and tested and we need to be encouraged so if you learn hey sorry i just remembered what it was i was going to get you go on interrupt me anyway um yeah now i lost my thought encourage be encouraged encourage and to pray for one another and <coughs> get together and and share meals like I'll be getting up here in a little bit. He says it's my back, but I'm cooking a meal for tonight. It's both. So I got to get up and and go check on the meal. But um, and that too, we have a Saturday night group where we have young parents right now with little kids coming to study and just learn about how to live the Messianic lifestyle, which is um, like I said, exciting. I think it is. If yeah. you, once you get into the stream and go through the seasons. So anyway, this week the Lord was showing me in um, reading, in one of my biblical readings. And this is, I really feel this is for the church, for the congregation today, the believers. This is something that's happening within this last year. Israel is coming under a lot of um, tension and threats from Iran. And um, the people over there that are believers and Catholics and Muslims and Arabs and everything, they're um, being they're given they're being preached the gospel every day now um, through Daystar and TBN. The gospel is going out in that area, and we all know the old, the older ones here that have been in the spirit for a while that it's time the Lord is coming. So we really need, like I said, to encourage you for the dark times that are coming and um, to learn how to pray, to learn how to have faith, to stay strong, um, to realize we have a lot of power in the spirit and that there's an enemy out there that wants us not to use our um, creative praying and warrior our ins uh, instruments of um, uh, fighting um, and that's what basically we'll be doing we'll be talking about stuff like that but this is the the verses the that the Lord gave me this week and I encouraged our rabbi with this this week it's in Revelation 3 7 and it's to the um, Church of Philadelphia and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, He who is holy, who is true, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, and who shuts and no one opens, says this, I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door, which no one can shut, because you have a little power and have kept my word and have not denied my name. And then it goes on. But basically... It's our time. It's our time to go th uh, through the doors, to open up doors, bless your lives, learn the blessings of God. Um, Messianic, we say prayers on uh, Shabbat. We say prayers 
over our kids. We bless, 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 and it works. It really does. Um, I should be in bed in a wheelchair with my back the way it is, but God has given me strength to walk. And I have pain, but he gives me the strength. And I think he's the best pain medicine that anybody could ever have. So I welcome you to our um, little show, and I know it's the first time. There's a lot of things that are going to be coming that, you know, we're planning to do. And um, I think it'll be exciting. Um, yes, the family members that are watching me, like my five kids and the grandkids, <laughs> your mother, your grandmother is, you know, gone the Shugana, but um, not really. I love you all. God bless you all. And I'm going to leave it to Joe now to do some <laughs> teaching while I go to the kitchen. Woohoo! Bye. Bye. See you in a bit. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So, um, and just so she knows, um, she was correct. The key is on his shoulder. Uh, the, the verse about the, um, the one who has the key of David. It is a direct quote from Yesh Yeshiahu or Isaiah 22, 22. And it says it's on his shoulder and he will sh what he shuts, shuts, what he opens, opens. And it's, a, it's also what the Messiah Yeshua quoted when he said to uh, Peter and also to the rest of the Shlachim or the apostles, what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you um, loose on earth will be loosed on heaven, in heaven. Basically, what you shut in on earth will be shut in heaven. What you sh open in on earth, you will be open in heaven. So that's, um, for, for us believers, that's very important. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started um, with the Torah portion. And the Torah portion for today, as I posted uh, at the very beginning, is Shemot, or... Exodus chapter 26 verses 1 through 30. Now we last year we discussed Shemot chapter 25 which is the beginning of this Torah portion Terumah or contribution and the end of the Torah portion actually goes to chapter 27 um, I believe verse 17 um, Wherever we left, wherever we started that last year is where it leaves off um, next year, and we'll discuss obviously discuss that next year. <coughs> so, um, as always, um, oh by the way, today is the third of Adar. Um, Purim is in two weeks, Mas or Menos, uh, when the moon is full this month, and uh, we'll we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and uh, just a, another little um, uh, administrative note: while we're while we are in Israel, uh, my schedule is going to be full. Um, if I have the opportunity, um, I would like to um, uh, do a teaching from Israel. Um, but I'll see how that goes. If if not, I'll see you two weeks when we get back. If I do get a chance to do it, then um, uh, obviously it'll pop up on Facebook or wherever else I have um, messaging on this and and you can um, follow along. And hopefully it'll be early enough here that or late enough there that everybody can see it at, at the right time. All right, so let's carry on. This is the review. Um, and again, since I'm going through the Torah in a period of three years, um, there's got to be a little, we're in the second ha second year of, of the reading cycle, and so there's got to be um, some review for what we discussed last year. Uh, it's been almost a whole year, actually it's probably been a little over a whole year because last year was a little bit longer than this year. And... Um, You know, we need reminders of what we talked about. Unless you went back yesterday or today um, and read this, or you you watched the la this one from last year, and then now you're watching this one. 
what we discussed last year and what we discussed this year is a year old. So we'll continue on. So the first thing we looked at was what teruma means. And it means literally a lifted up offering. Um, it's used several different places in the scripture. Um, I think the most interesting one is in um, the, the portion about the Levites. And when the Levites are... Um, I'm going to move some stuff here because I actually like standing. Oops. Um, sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Widen out. There we go. Okay. So now I can stand and talk. <coughs> and you can still see me. All right. So um, the Levites were, when they were or ordained, for lack of better words, when they, when they were um, presented to the Lord, they were actually, by the princes of Israel, they were lifted up. They were given as a, as a terumah to the Lord. All these things that we looked at last year were given as a lifted up offering to the Lord for the tabernacle, for the service of God. So, as the objects were lifted up, so were the Levites and the priests, so that they could, they are given to God as an offering. So, and we looked at the items that were offered. Um, gold, silver, bronze, blue and purple, scarlet linen, um, and fabrics, goat hair, ram skin. Uh, we looked at what's called takash. Takash? Um, is translated as porpoise, sea cow, beaver, um, though I, I, I don't really think there's any beavers in Egypt um, or the, the Reed Sea. It's translated as beaver um, and, and several other unclean animals. And what we discussed in that section was that the rabbis have no idea what this animal is. So um, I will use always the word tehash when I come across that um, description in the tent because we don't know what it is. Um, the rabbis in the Talmud say it's a mythical creature. It had all these pretty colors and this and that. Um, but when they started translating the scriptures into English, they started coming up with all sorts of things. We, the only thing we do know is that it is the skin of an unclean animal. Um, and this teruma is the beginning of pictures because all these are what built the picture. They're what build the pictures that God has set up for us. Um, so the first thing we looked at was the ark. And I provided some pictures, and I don't have them here today other than in this little thing, and it's way too small for people to see. But I went through different ideas of what people think. And then finally I, I used um, some drawings from uh, Michael Washer, the Rabbi Washer, that he used. And I feel, my opinion of course, that this is a more accurate representation as to what the Ark looked like because it's based on scripture. It's based on Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 5 through 10, and it describes what a cherubim looks like, or a cherub in English. And it also describes, we, we went through even the um, Temple Mount Faithful Society has these really weird looking things on top of the ark that are supposed to be Keruvim. But, as I mentioned, Ezekiel was a priest. He had been in the temple. He knew what a Keruvim looked like. So when he saw four living creatures, he goes, oh, four living creatures. I know what those are because I saw them on the temple. So that, and that is a picture of God's chariot. The next thing we looked at is the table of showbread, or what's called the table of showbread in the scriptures, but it's actually um, the bread of the faces, the um, lechem panim. Um, and, uh, no, according to the Hebrew. 
the Hebrew it's called pani, faces. So it's the bread of the faces. And then we looked at the menorah or the lampstand. And again, we looked at several different um, ideas of what the menorah looked like. And um, I again came down to, based off some uh, other books that I unfortunately don't have, um, which went into the Talmudic and the Mishnaic description of what the menorah looked like, I showed what a better, maybe a better image of the menorah is versus what they use in Israel today, because that image was actually taken off of the um, Roman um, Arch of Titus, which is the person who destroyed the temple. And those were actually replicas of the menorah that were originally in, the, um, in Solomon's temple. Uh, the original menorahs were taken to Babylon and destroyed. Uh, so the original menorah was probably hidden somewhere, so nobody's seen it. In that day, we'll obviously see what the menorah really looked like. And so that's, we are now where we begin. So um, the last thing we looked at, and this is repeated, and we'll look at it at the end also, is um, these are things that were shown to Moshe in the mountain. So, and God said, make them exactly like you see them in the mountain. So even though now today, because we've lost all this, um, there's no description of what it actually looked like. We're going based on what we think it looks like. God showed Moshe, Betzalel, and Aholiav the exact pictures he wanted them to look like so that there was no mistaking what was in heaven. So today, we're going to look at the, the Ohel, or the tent. Um, and I've got a picture there for reference. And we'll start with verse 1. Go ahead and read that real quick. Uh, let me make this printing a little smaller so I can read it. There we go. Moreover, you shall make the tent with ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubim. Okay. Um, the work of, a, of the skillful workman you shall make them. The length of each curtain shall be 28 cubits. And the breadth of the... Where am I? Um, the breadth of each curtain, four cubits. And all the curtains shall have one measure. Five curtains shall be coupled together one to another, and the other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. You shall make loops of blue on the edge of the one curtain from the edge in the coupling, and likewise you shall make the in the edge of the curtain that is outmost in the second coupling. You shall make 50 loops in the one curtain, and you shall make 50 loops in the edge of the curtain that is in the second coupling. The loops shall be opposite one another. You shall make 50 clasps of gold and couple the curtains one to another with the clasps and the tent shall be a unit. So, don't you try, oh, you move, oh, okay, I see what you did. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, first thing we're doing is looking at the first layer. And if you look right in here, you can see the tent, the first layer of the tent. It's got it's 10 layers or 10 sections and on each section are cherubim. So 10 curtains, they're made with blue, purple, scarlet and the cherubim. Now the blue, purple and scarlet are also used in the priestly um, uh, garments, the high, or the garments for the high priest. The, the idea, um, as I was taught, the, when these three colors get put together, it looks like the nighttime sky. So with the gold clasp and the nighttime sky, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but it should look like um, the stars in heaven with the cherubim circling around. Now it's 28 cubits long by four cubits wide. If you've done any studying of the of the tabernacle, you know it was 10 cubits high, 
10 cubits wide and the holy place was 20 cubits the holy of holies was 10 cubits so a total of 30 cubits long and every single temple every single um, iteration of the tabernacle whether it be this mobile one Solomon's um, Herod's or the new the the new temple in the kingdom they all have these same proportions not necessarily the same size but the same proportion so if you so if you look at that you've got 10 cubits up 10 cubits across and 10 cubits down the bottom the inside curtain actually will not um, come all the way to the ground and what happens is and we'll discuss this a little bit later is there's um, stands that the pillars sit on and those are visible underneath the curtain so five curtains and five curtains um, all sorts of pictures we discussed um, where did I, I let's see I left it over there um, in the box is the 39 Tavniot or maybe in the um, check the binder first it might be right in front of the binder <coughs> so that was the other thing I forgot to get um, so when we talked about the 39 top note last year where we looked at all the different parts which was actually a complete Torah portion in itself um, one of the things we looked at were the parts of the tent this inside covering is a picture of the temple in heaven where there's keruvim all around um, and anytime the five comes up in the scripture it's a picture of the five gifts that um, are present in the spirit and then we looked at then there was loops of blue and clasps of gold and as I mentioned earlier, these clasps are actually, they, they, when you look, go in the tent and you look up, you should see what looks like a row of stars. Um, kind of like the eclipse, or the ecliptic, that the um, main uh, constellations go along in, in, the tent, in, the, in the heavens. So, this bottom curtain is a picture of is literally a picture of the um, uh, heavens uh, of the the stars in the sky. And I've got another. Let me pull out the. Oh, you know what? I think I might have. Um, where did I put that? There it is. Okay. If they so. Hmm? If they want a copy of the Terama, we'll right. find it and we yeah. can email it to you. So send us a message if you want the um, handout. Right. Um, very good point. Um, I've I've already taught on the Terama on the um, I'm sorry on the the 39 Tavniot. If you want a complete list and with scripture references of how we get what they're pictures of email me I'll email you the teaching but also um, any of this on the Tarot Ma, um I'll send you I can send you copies of of the PowerPoints so that you can have copies of all the verses and everything that we talk about so you might also notice on this picture that there's writing above the um, tabernacle I don't know if you can read it or not but it says the tabernacle, the Mishkan, the made of ten curtains of blue and purple and scarlet and wool woven together with fine twisted linen. It has representations of the Caribbean woven into it. The tabernacle is the home or house of the presence of God, a picture of heaven. So that's the first part. We continue on. Verse chap verses seven through thirteen. You shall make curtains of goat's hair for a covering over the tent. Eleven curtains you shall, shall you make them. The length of each curtain shall be thirty cubits. The breadth of each cu curtain four cubits. The eleven curtains shall have one measure. You shall 
couple five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. You shall double over the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tent. You shall make 50 loops on the edge of uh, well, on the edge of the one curtain that is outmost in the coupling and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain which is outmost in the second coupling. You shall make 50 clasps of brass and put the clasps into the loops and couple the tent together that it may be one. The overhanging part that remains of the curtain of the tent, the half curtain that remains shall hang over the back of the tent. The cubit on the one side and the cubit on the other side of that which remains in the length of the curtains of the tent shall hang over the sides of the tent on this side and on that side to cover it. All right, so this is the second level of the tent. Um, also, this is actually the part that's called the ohel, made of 11 curtains of goat hair woven into yarn. Ohel means a wandering tent or a tent, a habitation that always moves. Um, and I, I, it, It's interesting because we were listening to, um, oh, what's the guy's name? Uh, um, yeah, we were listening to a pastor this week um, teaching on the talit, the, the prayer shawl. And he said the talit and the ohel were the same word. No. The picture he showed was fantastic and cool. But there was a little bit of false teaching because he called it a tent, a prayer closet, and all these other things. And it's, no, the prayer shawl is different from a tent. It is not something you, it, it's something they used to live in, but it was a garment. It was actually part of their garments, their daily wear. So this ohel that we're talking about was made of goats here. It was made, goat is a kosher animal. It is one of about three or four animals that are kosher that are pictures of demons, but it's a picture of our flesh, um, the, the physical flesh. And it covers our the um, mishkan, or the spiritual um, part of us. So it's, made out of go so it's made out of hair. There's 11 of them. And these start form, these with the other two coverings start forming the door of the mishkan. These are all 30 cubits by 4 cubits, and, and as I said, they're, these actually reach down to the ground. So if you look from the outside, and um, a couple of years ago I went to a roving uh, life-size um, tabernacle put on by, I believe it was a Seventh-day Adventist. Um, it was kind of cool. Some of the stuff was really cool about it, but, you know, there was other stuff that was very Christian, very Hellenized. But the, the cool thing was they actually, when they staked out the tent, the, the sides came out to, the, out to an angle. So you could see these bases that I was talking about a few minutes ago and that I'll talk about a little bit more um, in... In, on the tent. So as you came up to the tent, you could see these um, pieces. You could see the, the, the bases. Now, there were five. Obviously, you can't cut a curtain in half. Otherwise, it would be six and six, and there would be 12 curtains. So they, this extra curtain that's been made out of goat's hair goes around and makes the covering for the door. And in the second um, part of the the tent in the second covering we've gone from gold class now to bronze or, or brass class depending on the translation it's either bronze or brass um, but they're a, a darker ruddier color than gold so we're slowly getting farther and farther away from God's holiness we're getting into lower lower and lower value metal as well. Um, and as I mentioned, the 11th curtain shall overhang the front. And by that it means it's just wrapped around 
and that's what creates the door of the tent. Uh, 14 to 22. You shall make a covering for the tent of ram skin dyed red and a covering of, and here it has sea cow, but as I mentioned before, it's tachash. Um, so a covering of tachash hide above. You shall make the boards for the tent of shatim wood, which is oftentimes translated acacia. I personally don't believe it's acacia. I think it's something else. Standing up, 10 cubits shall be the length of the board and one and a half cubits the breadth of each board. There shall be two tenons in each board joined to one another. Thus you shall make for all the boards of the tent. You shall make the boards for the tent, 20 boards for the south side southward. You shall make 40 sockets of silver under the 20 boards, two sockets under one board for its tenons, and two sockets under another board for its two tenons. For the second side of the tent on the north side, 20 boards, and there are 40 sockets of silver two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board. And we'll stop there for a minute because I ran out of room on my PowerPoint, so I've got to continue to the next slide. So we look we see two more coverings. Ram skin, again a picture of flesh. This um, covering is called the Mahish Ohel or a covering a covering or protection for the tent made of goat or ram skin dyed red. In Hebrew, goat is a eel, which means strength, leader, or noble. So it's a picture of um, just you the basically the body of Yeshua. And then the last covering is called the Mikish, um, which is a covering for the whole structure made from Tachash skins. Tach and as it says here, Takash is an unknown animal. It could be beaver, porpoise, weasel, seal, but definitely an unclean animal. And so then we get into the boards, and we don't have a lot on the boards, but as I mentioned in the 39 Tavniot, the boards are a picture of the Keruvim. The um, bases are a picture of their feet. They're also a picture of believers as we, sur as we surround the throne of God as shown in, in the book of Revelation, or Chazon. Um, base, so when this whole covering is over, it looks like a row of feet on either side. You've got 20 boards with 40 bases. Well, we've got, we're a board, and we've got two bases called legs. So it's a picture of people, believers, and we're surrounding, or it can be angels, um, Keruvim, because they also had the um, two, they had two legs. Um, they were made of shatim wood, which, as I just mentioned, we, we really don't know what it is. Um, Helena, the mother of Constantine, is the one who came up with acacia wood um, and her group. Uh, in the third century B CE. So, really don't know what kind of wood this was. I personally think it's along the lines of either pine or cedar, or a mixture of the two, which would be the equivalent of Spanish cedar. They were two cu 10 cubits long, a picture of 10, anytime you see 10 in the scriptures, usually a picture of destruction, and 1.5 cubits wide. So, um, a span and a half. 20 boards on one side, 40 sockets. So far we've got 80 um, boards, I'm sorry, 40 boards and 80 sockets. And, whoops, I got ahead of myself. Um, six Verse 23 says there's six boards on the west, so I got ahead of myself. So let's go there. For the far part of the tent westward, you shall make six boards. Two boards shall you make for the corners of the tent in the far part. They shall be double beneath, and in like manner they shall be in, entire to the top of it to one ring. Thus it shall be for them both. They shall be for the two corners. There shall be eight boards and their sockets of silver, 16 sockets. Two sockets under one board, 
two sockets on another board. You shall make the bars of shatim wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tent, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tent, five bars for the boards of the side of the tent, for the far part westward. The middle bar in the midst of the board shall pass through end to end. You shall overlay the boards with gold and make their rings of gold for, place, for places for the bars, and you shall overlay the bars with gold. You shall set up the tent according to the way it was shown, according to the way it was shown to you in the mountain. All right, so <clears throat> last little bit. Um, so as I discussed on the last slide, six boards in back, and then two more boards to make a total of eight boards. So there's 48 boards in the back that doesn't include the ones that separate the Holy of Holies from the holy place or the front entrance. And we discuss those next year. And so 48, and we'll get into the rest next, we'll count up all the boards next year. Um, and then five bars. And the way this worked were, was you had two bottom bars that went through rings on the outside. You had two top bars that went through rings on the top. And then you had a single board. The dogs are going to start howling because the fire trucks flew down the street. Yeah. So here they come. And Good there goes the, the howling. howling. So you know we're alive. So, and now I got to pull her this way a little bit so she's just back in the camera. <laughs> so, she was moving the camera around and, anyways. So, the last board, the fifth board, goes right through the center of all the, the boards. They're all surrounded by gold. Um, in Zechariah, chapter 2, he has a vision of a menorah with gold bars, two olive trees, and a golden bowl on top. That gold, the bars, all of it is a picture of the Spirit of God. These bars are a picture of the Ruach, the Spirit of God, and they go through the whole thing. There's one main spirit, the Ruach, HaKodesh, what we call the Ruach HaKodesh, or the Holy Spirit. But there's God has other spirits. There's um, spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, spirit of strength, spirit of... Um, uh, Kingship? Malchut, mm, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember the seven spirits in Isaiah chapter 11. But um, fear of the Lord, I'm missing one and I can't remember what it is. Um, there's a spirit of jealousy, there's a spirit of righteousness. There, God has all these spirits as part of him. He's not just three bodies, he's all these different things. And they um, manifest themselves in different ways. But the main spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, goes through all things. It's God's spirit and it goes through all things. The other four bars are more pictures of our spirit. You know, we our spirit doesn't go through all things. It just goes through us. But it connects us one another as believers. It also connects us at, to God through the, the main spirit, that one that goes through all things. I just saw that. Cool. Um, and as I said, the center board will pass through all of them. The boards are overlaid with gold. Again, a picture from Zechariah of the Spirit of God because all the menorah and the bowl were all gold. And God says, you will set it up as, you, as it was shown to you in the mountain. God protects these things to the death sometimes. Because the Messiah came and died for us, that um, uh, that discipline of death is not always used. It's hardly ever used by God because the Messiah took our sin for us. Unfortunately, it has bred um, laziness in the church so that you know when we look at these pictures, we don't see what God wants us to see. We see what man wants us to see. So you get 
churches and cathedrals and all these other things instead of a simple picture of what God wants to see in heaven. So, that is it. But we were um, taught that the layers go from heaven up to the flesh, right? Right. So it's kind of a reverse order where we're here on earth in the flesh and God is, wants us to come up to heaven or to where he dwells in a temple and the temple in heaven looks like the temple on earth. He's using the same pictures. There are ministering angels up there. There's priests. There's um, Levites. There's singers. Um, mm -hmm. God does not do anything by coincidence. He sets up these pictures to show us that this is what heaven looks like. Right. It's a marvelous, marvelous place. And it's very Jewish. Um, the other thing, you're done teaching? Yeah. Huh? That's yeah. pretty good. Um, I tell him he talks too much. Anyway, he's going to learn. I'll, I'll, I'll get him in, in shape. <laughs> so he won't be so boring. <laughs> but anyway, um, as a, a, a gift of prophet and a, a gift of an apostle, we love to um, put things in order. We love to um, pray in to the Spirit what we're seeing. That's what I, I do. I pray into the Spirit. He doesn't understand, but the Spirit shows me something. She's Usually. learned how to describe things yeah. in order so that I will understand. I used to be very, like, and I saw this and I saw that. But more not lately, it's, <laughs> um, he gives me verses gives me Bible verses to kind of give me more pictures. But also, um, God wants us to pray for people. We're not doing this for money. We're not a nonprofit organization. We are, our bank is with God we trust. He's <laughs> providing everything. We have a bunch of nonprofit um groups in Israel that we could refer you to to give money to. We love um, supporting Israel. Um, so we'll be putting that up on our website. This is called fivewisevirgins.org. That's, um, that, that's the umbrella website. We will probably have another one and we've been talking about it, Secrets Revealed. That will be this primarily for the teaching of pictures and revealing of secrets in the scriptures so and it'll have a blog and it'll have the video as well anyway we're not asking for donations but we are asking it um, to send us prayer requests that's mm. the gift the ministry that God has given me and I would love to pray for anything you're going through right now you see this and you hear me say, I want to pray for you. I really do. God has put me here to reach some people in this way. And uh, he's going to do wonderful things. He really is. There's miracles happening. And um, there's a revival starting. And we want you to be a part of it. We want you to wake up if you're asleep. One of those baby Christians that are just going to church. Um, we want you to wake up because God is calling us and uh, that's what we're going to be called. He has called us, chosen us, and now he's preparing us for his coming. You want to say yep. a prayer? Yep. Father, I thank you again for today. I thank you for the Shabbat. I thank you for the order of your Shabbat. I thank you that you've given us people who want to hear your message through us. And I thank you that you, you are bringing more and more people to, to our door, whether it be through the internet door or to our physical door, Father. Father, I ask that you keep all your things in order, each and every Shabbat. 
Let us follow your will, not our will. As it was shown to Moshe in the mountain, open our eyes to see what was shown to Moshe. In Yeshua, your Messiah's name. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Shabbat shalom.